Hey guys, Mr. Wood here, back for some more chemistry. And remember the assignment, let me go over this. Remember the assignment that is due uh, for tomorrow, Thursday. And I'm going to start off class with any questions you have, because I know that this stuff gets a little bit sticky. But uh, so the problems, this is what's due tomorrow. And again, if you could scan it and send it to me as a PDF, the two worksheets, so the mass to mass, mass to molecule, these questions from the book, the practice we did in class on Tuesday, and the quiz. What we're going to get into today, and I just want to start on this, and if you're struggling with this, it might be worth finishing this and then coming back and watching this after class on Thursday, but limiting reactants, limiting reactants, which if I said that and Mr. Hodes and Mr. Conyers was here, they go, oh, oh. That's uh, always a bit of a challenge. So I want to uh, just just kind of get you into that, talking about this a little bit. Okay, so to the notes. Okay, so limiting reactants, and this is the end of the notes, and I'm going to come back, and I just kind of want to get us started on this. But the limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first. Whatever runs out first determines how much product that can, that can be made. And I'm actually going to do, do a difference. So these problems are always gonna give you two sets of data, two different numbers. Every problem we've been doing for a while has always given you one number so you know where you start. These problems are gonna give you two numbers. And what I'm gonna say here, I'm actually gonna do this a different way. So, and I'll say this again in class on Thursday, but to find the limiting reactant, instead of converting both to moles and divide by the coefficient, I would convert both to the product and divide, convert both to the product and compare. And the one that gives the lower number is the limiting reactant. So I'll say that again. This is the way I'm going to teach you to do this. To find the limiting reactant, convert both, because you're going to have two numbers usually, Convert both to the product, and the one that gives the smaller one is your limiting reactant. Now, a lab that we're going to do, a lab or an activity, is going to be we're going to make s'mores, and I'll talk more about this. But the point is, is you're going to have graham crackers, chocolates, and marshmallows, and I'll tell you the combination I want you to do. And you're going to combine them, and you're going to run out of one of them. You're going to run out of the graham crackers, okay, or whatever it is, This maybe the chocolates or the marshmallows. Well, whatever you run out of determines how much you make. And that's where the whole idea of a limiting reactant comes from. So, so limiting reactant is what runs out first in a reaction. Okay, so I'm going to just work, and, and the, the, the handout that you guys will need for this is the one that says, it's worksheet 10.5, the one that says limiting reactants. But I'm gonna have you have that for class on Thursday. So I wanna just do one problem, just one problem, kind of get you started on the whole limiting reactant thing. And then we're gonna come back and we're going to do a bunch of problems in class on Thursday. And these are problems that you've got uh, to be doing. So, <clears throat> Okay, I'm gonna do problem 52 in the book. So I'm doing 52 in the book. Okay, I'm just gonna do one problem here. I think this is the one I wanna do. Okay, um, so this is the reaction we got. And in this chapter, you always wanna make sure that the equation is balanced. And whenever I see, whenever I see a coefficient, it tells me that is. Let me sh make sure I've written this, that, that out right. This is one of the problems that's going to be due, and I'm actually going to work uh, the handout with you. Okay, so there they explain this. This is on page 287. What is the theoretical yield? And, and actually, in class today, I'm actually taping this on Tuesday. Lauren, Lauren, I think asked this. This means grams. That's what that means. So theoretically, you'll mean grams of urea. That's this. So we're trying to find grams of this. And here we have 100 grams of ammonia. And we have 100 grams of carbon dioxide. So again, I just today wanted to 
kind of get you to look at this. And if this is like, ah, oh, boy, maybe it's good to put this off till, till Thursday and then come back and watch this. But a limiting reactant problem, <clears throat> now you have two numbers. And that's how you always know it's a limiting reactant problem. So, again, what I'm going to do, like I tried to explain there in the notes, is I want to convert both of these. So I'm just going to have to do, do it twice. So it's going to be more work. So I'm going to convert them both to this compound called urea. And then I'm going to compare those. And um, one of my good friends is Mr. Cushy. Another good friend is Mr. Ober. We play a lot of golf. And in most games, most sports, the winner has the higher points. Like this weekend, the Super Bowl in Kansas City and Tampa Bay will play. And the winner will have more points. Okay, And the Nuggets will play. And the Avalanche will play. The Rockies, I don't think, have learned that concept yet, that the more points wins games. But, but this is like a golf game. It's the one sport thing where the team or the person, the individual with the lower points is actually the winner. And so I'm going to convert both of these. So these are both gram-to-gram -gram conversions. So I have two numbers. I'm figuring out which runs out first, and that's going to tell me my answer. Okay, so I'm going to go here to here, and I'm going to go here to here, and then I'm going to compare my answers. I'm going to move this down. And the one that gives the smaller, the smaller number will be my answer. So again, a limiting reactant is the reactant that runs out first. And so it's the one that's smaller. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is so gram to gram, mass to mass. So I'm going to look up the mass of NH3. So 14 plus 3 is 17. So we convert to moles. Then I'll do the ratio. So it's going to be 2 to 1. So now I'm, I'm using the ratio. And now I'm going to find the mass. Again, here we are again doing a conversion like we did all day in class on Tuesday. So i got to find the mass of this. So carbon weighs 12. Nitrogen 14 times 2 is 28. Hydrogen 4, oxygen 16. So I'm just finding the molar mass. So let's see. So 12 plus 28 plus 4 plus 16 gives me 60. Okay, so I'm just, again, doing a, a mass to mass conversion. So now I'll do the math. So I'll do 100 times 1 times 1 times 60 equals divided by 17 equals divided by 2 gives me 176. Again, this is the way I'm going to show you to do this. So when you do these, do both of the conversions. So then for CO2, so again, this is a mass to mass conversion, grams to grams. So CO2, 12 plus 32 is 44. Okay, now I'm going to do the mole to mole. So here it's 1 to 1. Okay, and then the final thing is going to look like this because it's still the same mass. So for the 1 mole... And the one that gives the smaller number will be my answer. So 100 times 1 times 1 times 60 divided by 44, enter, gives me 136. Now I compare the two. And so this would be my answer. It didn't ask this, and again, I'm going to work some more problems tomorrow in class, but this technically then is the limiting reactant, the LR. So limiting reactant problem is a problem where you're given two numbers, and you got to convert them both to the product, and the one that gives the smaller answer is the one that's limiting. So today I kind of got ahead of where we were in class yesterday. So if you're still working on the mass-to-mass, mass-to-molecule, good, fine. We're going to work a whole bunch of problems like this in class uh, on Thursday. So, but, but if you are good with that, hopefully that makes sense. So limiting reactants, what runs out first, whatever runs out first determines how much you make. So you take both of the numbers, you're given two numbers. The one that gives the smaller one is your answer. So it's like a golf game. Okay. Hopefully that is a little bit, I mean, a little bit, again, if that's confusing, just wait on Thursday. We'll work on that more. Guys, have a good day. I will talk to you on Thursday.